In this segment, we're going to add a little noise back in our image to compensate for the fact that we ran the noise reduction filter. And what I'm going to show you here works particularly well with portraits and skin tones in particular. It can actually achieve a sort of a fake skin texture that covers up any blemishes and enhances the image. To begin, we're just going to make a new layer. And I'll lock its position and call it Noise. And we'll hit Shift F5, fill it with 50% gray. You can see our vignette. I'll turn it off that and in the color correction because it's a little annoying here. And we'll go Filter Noise, Add Noise. Now you can see what it looks like here. We don't, we're not going to want uniform. We'll choose Gaussian because it's a little more random and we'll choose monochromatic. Before we add it like this, let's change the blending mode to overlay, which is what we'll eventually do anyway. And we can view the noise in this context. Let's go in at 200%. We'll see what the noise does here. We'll go filter, noise, add noise. We're going to choose Gaussian. And see the color noise is actually a byproduct of a digital camera sensor. If we choose monochromatic, it's almost going to approximate the old kind of noise you'd get like film grain, which is it complements the colors. Now we're going to go way down about 2% noise. See how it just adds this little bit of like grain to it? This might be a little too much. I'll go like 1.5 and just a little bit. I think this would work better on a portrait than really with these dogs, but I want to show you the technique here anyway. So we'll set it to like 1.5 and we can set this off a little bit if we blur the noise slightly. So I'm going to go Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and give it the minimum blur that you can even apply. Is 0 0.3 is about all that it'll take. If I turn off the preview, you can see how it's having a slight effect. You can probably better see it here in this window. See how the blurring is just softening it slightly? There we go. Now let's have a look here. And there's the before and the after. And you can see how it, this isn't skin texture. For skin texture, it would work great. But even though this was fur, you can see how it kind of helps clear up these areas that the noise reduction filter hit. It just makes it so smooth that, like right here, even, even with a background gradient, it's so smooth that it looks kind of fake. But this adds a little bit of look of film grain to it. Now, I'm going to back off on the opacity a little bit and just dial in enough where it's just starting to be noticeable. Depending on your uses, like say it's a portrait uh, on facial areas, this will work real well. It'll give it a skin tone kind of look. There. We'll keep it about like that. Another trick you can do, I call it the olive and the martini, is to add another layer of noise. And I'm going to call this one fine noise. Same thing, Shift F5, we're going to fill this with 50% gray and set the blending mode to overlay and lock its position. And this time I'm going to add noise, same thing, but I'm going to add the minimum that we'll even take, and that is 0 0.5. Any lower than this, and you won't even notice it in the window. Let's try 0 0.3. Oh, zero. You can barely see it. 0 0.5 is about the minimum that will even register. And it's so fine that oh, you can see it a little bit. Let's zoom in some. So let's look in over here. You can see the difference. There we go. 0 0.5, just the smallest amount. And the next step just consists in mixing our layers to get just the perfect effect. On the noise reduction and sharpening layer, I've got 100% opacity. Now, if you sharpened a little bit too much or the effect was too strong, you could back off. In this case, I like it, but uh, I could back off a little bit. I kept 
less than half of this layer's noise, and maybe this fine noise I won't even keep the total 100%. But that fine noise works real well just to cover, that way you don't go too much with the rough noise, which approximates on a portrait, uh, pores on the skin, but then this one just approximates the finest film grain. Now let's look over here. We're at 200%, so she should be able to see it pretty well. Even this, I'm going to drop it a little bit. But between the two layers, that adds just that little element of film grain, and it looks real nice when it's printed out on paper. Let's see, we're at 100%, so I doubt you can see it too well. Let's To wrap up here, let's just go to how about this area down here where the grass is. Here we go. And see how our there's before. And see before the noise reduction was done, we had a little bit of graininess. Although there's color noise in there, which produces color splotchiness. See it right in here, which is not a very desirable thing. But if we go back and add our new noise, see how nice that looks. I hope you can see the benefits here of adding the noise to a separate layer. Uh, for one, it's dodging and burning, so it's not destroying any pixels here. And also, if we were applying the noise directly to a layer, we wouldn't be able to blur the noise without blurring the actual pixels of our image. But here we were actually able to blur that noise to soften it a bit. The next segment will be the last video of this series, and in it, we're going to prepare this file to print.